And so the question then, after Tegra II, dual first, the world's first dual core, after Tegra III, the world's first quad core, and then we double the performance of that with Tegra IV, what's next for us? What's next for us? I mean, what could we possibly do? I guess we could, we could do eight cores, but that seems pretty pedestrian. That seems pretty obvious. We could do 12 cores, that's more than eight. Um, however, I think that maybe we could do better than that. What we decided to do was we decided to make Tegra K1 the world's first 192 core processor. Yeah. 192 CUDA cores, all programmable by the, by the, by the um, by programs, all fully programmable, all massively parallel. And this is the first GPU, the reason why we decided to call it Tegra K1 is because this is the first GPU that took a vast jump from the previous generation. It's almost inappropriate to call it Tegra 5 because it's simply not linear. We decided to call it Tegra K1. We decided to call it Tegra K1 because it's based on the Kep Kepler architecture. As many of you know, Kepler is the most successful GPU architecture that we have ever created, and it's the most important GPU architecture the industry had ever known. This architecture, because it is so energy efficient, has made it possible, and so, so programmable, has made it possible for us to extend the GPU from not just desktop computers to workstations, but all the way into the cloud with grid and into supercomputers with Tesla. One singular architecture, all compatible, is now able to span computing from a few watts all the way to megawatts, from 192 cores all the way to 36 million cores running our nation's fastest supercomputer, all based on the exact same architecture called Kepler. So we're really, really excited today that with Tegra, we've bridged the gap. We've brought mobile computing to the same level as desktop computing. We've brought mobile computing to the same level as supercomputing. We've brought the heart of GeForce and the soul of Tesla to the Tegra family. We've brought the heart of GeForce and the soul of Tesla to mobile computing. And we're really excited about that. Now, what's the benefit? What's the benefit of that? Well, the first benefit is solving, in fact, a very significant problem for game developers. If you take a look, take a look at game development today, just as you saw with Batman, the production value is incredible. It's completely cinematic. It's cinematic and also interactive at the same time. The computer graphics is cinematic. The experience is cinematic. The story has to be sufficiently broad and large and, and, and large in scope that you can actually enjoy the video game for eight hours at a time, 10 hours at a time, 20 hours at a time. So there's enormous depth to the video games. And it stands to reason, with so much artistic contribution and so much technical contribution, that the production value, the production cost, would be so high. In fact, most AAA titles today cost more than $100 million. Now, there's only one thing that you can do to solve that problem. You can either reduce the production value, or you have to have a larger footprint. You have to find a way, as a game developer, to reach more users. Well, in order to reach more users, unfortunately, the architectures are radically different. When you take a look at each one of the game platforms, the architectures historically were very different. They're becoming more and more similar. However, the architecture of mobile devices, which is the largest computing platform in the world today, and the architecture of next generation game consoles are radically different. One of them is based on OpenGL ES 3.0, and the other one's based on OpenGL 
The capabilities are rad radically different. The capabilities, the features. And so, for a game developer, the diversity of the platforms creates another degree of complexity that is simply intolerable. The developer's dilemma. They want to build great games, they want to take the financial risk, but they need to have large enough footprint that can accept and help people enjoy the creation that they make. And so today, we're incredibly excited to announce that Epic Games is going to bring their next generation engine, the Unreal Engine 4, to the Tegra K1. And Tim, Tim, Tim is, is a man of few words, for all of you guys who know Tim. And he has the highest expectations. We've been working with Tim now for 20 years. He has the highest expectations of anybody in the game industry. And he's just, he says it so cleanly. He says we can take absolutely anything that runs on PC or high-end console and run it on Tegra now. I didn't think that we'd be at this level on mobile for another three or four years.